In this video we'll look at bar plots. Here's a demo of a bar plot. Uh, here we're looking at the days of the week and here we're looking at the number of cookies eaten on each one of those days. So it looks like on Monday there's 13, on Tuesday there's 14, and, and maybe 11 on Wednesday and so on. Okay. Now some of the essential ingredients of a bar plot are the uh, bars, <laughs> the bars that are counting something. If in this case we're we're counting a frequency, uh, we might want to look at a relative frequency instead. So there's the bars, there's the name of the graph, and there's what these values are here, what each one of the bars are, are representing, uh, a name for those X, an X label, and a Y label. So let's take a look at the script that built all of those pieces. Okay, so here is this. So here's the script. First of all, we needed to have the values associated with each one of the bars. So I've got a vector that contains those values. Then we're using the R command for bar plot and it's going to do a bar plot of X. Now there's a bunch of other commands here. I want to come back and talk about those, but first of all, I want you to see that we can just bar plot X. When we execute that, then it just produces the bars and the value and a value scale over here on the y-axis. So now let's look at each of the options that we would put in bar plot to get the title, to get the x, the label for each one of these uh, bars, for the x label and also for the y label. There's an option in bar plot called main. Just say main is equal to and then in quotation marks write what you want the main title to be. Now there are other options in bar plot as well. Now remember that R does not mind us breaking a long line of code. This makes it much easier for us to read. There's, we're going to bar plot X, there's the main, comma. Now I'd like to have the X label to be days of the week, the Y label to be the number of cookies eaten, I'd like to have the name arguments of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the order that they show up here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'd like to color it blue just because I think that's more colorful. Okay, I had an extra parenthesis on here that I needed to correct. Okay, so there you are. We're plotting X. There's the bar plot of, of those uh, five values. Uh, the X label is going to be the days of the week. The Y label is going to be the number of cookies eaten. And uh, the name arguments are going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which uh, match up with these in that particular order. And there's the command for saying that the color of the graph is going to be blue. COL stands for color uh, equals blue. Okay. So instead of looking at a frequency here, let's look at a relative frequency. So instead of making a bar graph of X, I want to make a bar graph of the relative frequencies. So let's build that. So the first thing that I need to know is how many cookies are there altogether. So I need to take the sum of X. I need to add 12 and 14 and 11 and 9 and 13 so that I know the total number of cookies that are involved. So now, instead of having the number, I'd like to have the, the fraction of the total for each one. And so I'm going to look at, at XF, and instead of doing a bar plot of X, I'm doing, going to do a bar plot of XF now, but with the same information, except now instead of the number of frequency, the number of cookies eaten, I want to have the fraction of total cookies eaten on this scale over here. Now, the bars didn't really change. I mean, the picture looks very much the same, of course. But now we're looking at 
Here we've got about 20% of the cookies were eaten on Monday. On Tuesday, it looks like a somewhat more, maybe 30 something. And then something under 20 was here, and this looks like it's a little over uh, 15, or maybe right close to 15, and so on. Okay, now we could have had these written as percent here instead. To, to change it to a percent, I need to multiply this amount by 100. Instead of having a fraction, I need to times that by 100 and then divide by the n. Uh, execute that. Of course, now we probably need to change this name because we want to have this the percent. Uh, the percent of total cookies eaten and execute that and there we've got the graph. Now our textbook uses a very simplified form of a Pareto graph. It just says that a Pareto graph is a bar graph where you start with the largest and then uh, count down. So we need to order this instead of uh, in the order that the days of the week come, we need to have the largest one and then the next largest one and so on. So let's leave it with uh, the percent of cookies eaten, but what I need to do is have this vector xf sorted. So my script, I'm going to have this new vector xfs, which is going to be the sorted uh, value of this, there's something that I need to put in here as well. And now it's going to be important that I'm that I'm plotting x, f, s in the sorted uh, list instead of the regular list. And the problem is now it's sorting it in, uh, it, it starts from the smallest and goes to the largest. That's because the sort command by default has descending equal to false. So we need to tell R to sort the descending uh, equal to true. I used the one wrong word here. It's not descending, it's decreasing. So decreasing equals true. And so now it's going the right way, but now I need to look at these labels. This is no longer Monday here. I'm going to make these adjustments by hand. The largest one was actually Tuesday, so Tuesday needs to be the first one. Here I'm just editing those. Tuesday was the largest, uh, Friday, uh, Tuesday was the largest, Friday was the next largest, and then Monday was the third largest. So the, the order that they come in now when we're going from largest to smallest is Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now when I execute that code, then it adjusts these labels properly. These are the percent of cookies eaten on, on each one of these days. We can read those off and so on. So that's how we do a Pareto graph. Now I just might want to mention that we looked at another video where instead of having these summarized data for, uh, for each one of the days that were involved, we uh, we had all we had raw data, and so we used the table command to gather up and count how much happened on on each one of the days, and then we could do a bar plot of a, of that table. Bar plots are are pretty smart; they can decide what kind of a thing that you're looking at. So when we give them a vector, then it just plots that vector. Okay, so summarizing. We build a vector. In this case, we built the vector and then we adjusted the vector quite a bit so we could get a Pareto graph out of it because we wanted the, 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 a vector of the percentages and we wanted those percentages in a, in a decreasing order for the Pareto graph. And then the bar plot will plot that vector. Main will give a title for the plot X label will tell what the X label is. The Y label will tell what the Y label is. The name arguments need to be the names that match up in the same order that the vector comes in. So when we had sorted this vector, then Tuesday was the 
the largest, Friday was the next largest, Monday next largest, and so on. That's why this name argument had to be changed, and of course the COL command uh, in plots changed the color of the plot. Okay, there you go.